Have you ever experienced a sting of feeling ignored by someone you care about? It's a tough spot to be in, right? But don't worry, there's a smart and peaceful way to handle it, inspired by Stoic philosophy, that can actually strengthen your relationships. Let's explore how to navigate the silent treatment with grace and wisdom. Stay with us, as each piece of advice we share will help you turn this challenging situation into an opportunity for growth. Marcus Aurelius wisely said, The best revenge is to be unlike him who performed the injury. This timeless advice is perfect for handling situations where you feel disregarded. Instead of letting hurt or anger take over, the stoic approach encourages us to rise above the negativity. By staying calm and keeping our dignity, we show that we are not defined by others' actions but by our own responses before we dive into our tips. I'd love for you to do something small but meaningful. Hit that like button, subscribe to join our wonderful community, and leave a comment below. With I rise above, this simple act helps us stay focused on handling such situations with grace and strength. Your comment also helps others discover this valuable advice. Ready to transform this challenge into a chance for positive change? Let's jump in. Principle 1. Cultivate self-sufficiency is it fascinating how we sometimes hand over the reins of our happiness to others. As if we're waiting for someone else to paint our mood each day, it's like giving away our paintbrush and waiting for someone else to color our world. Marcus Aurelius offers a principle 1. Cultivate self-sufficiency is it fascinating how we sometimes hand over the reins of our happiness to others. As if we're waiting for someone else to paint our mood each day, it's like giving away our paintbrush and waiting for someone else to color our world. Marcus Aurelius offers a powerful reminder. Very little is needed to make a happy life. It is all within yourself and your way of thinking. This quote is like a call to action, urging us to grab our own paintbrush and fill our days with hues of joy and satisfaction. Imagine you're setting up a romantic dinner, hoping it will mend a rough patch in your relationship. But what if your partner isn't as enthusiastic as you'd hoped? Instead of letting this disappointment cast a shadow over the evening, why not take a moment to enjoy the effort you've put into it? You might say with a smile, Well, I guess I made enough delicious pasta to solve world hunger tonight. This way, you turn the situation around with humor and find happiness in your own company and effort. Regardless of how things turn out, being self-sufficient means finding joy and contentment within ourselves rather than relying on others to provide it. It's about savoring that pasta dish on your own if needed, valuing your efforts, and understanding that your happiness doesn't depend on someone else's reactions. So, let's take firm hold of that paintbrush, friends. Whether we're dealing with relationships or other aspects of life, self-sufficiency is our superpower. It helps us handle life's ups and downs with grace and a touch of humor. And whenever you feel like you're slipping into dependency, gently remind yourself, I rise above and reclaim control over your happiness. After all, you are the best artist in the gallery of your life. Principle 2. Maintain your virtue wine moments when you feel ignored or left out. It's natural to want to react in the same way or lower your own standards to match the behavior you're encountering. However, the stoic principle of maintaining your virtue, no matter how others act, is incredibly important. Epictetus wisely advises, don't explain your philosophy, embody it. This means that true strength and character aren't shown by just talking about our values, but by living them, especially when things get tough. For instance, if someone you care about begins to ignore you, sticking to your virtue means continuing to treat them with kindness and respect, even if they aren't showing the same in return. It's about rising above negative reactions and keeping a dignified composure. You might handle the situation with a bit of humor, like saying, Hey, I just wanted to check if you've turned into a statue you've been so quiet. This way, you not only maintain your self-respect, but also keep things light and open for the other person to reconnect without feeling awkward. Staying true to your virtues in these moments shows the strength of your character and can even encourage others to reflect on and possibly change their own behavior. By living out your highest values, you lead by example and create an environment where respect and kindness thrive. So, let's remember to Principle 3. Use the obstacle as the way have you ever noticed how the very things that annoy us in relationships can actually be opportunities for personal growth. Imagine you're stuck in a traffic jam, and instead of getting frustrated, you realize it's a perfect chance to catch up on that audiobook you've been wanting to listen to. This is what Stoic philosopher Ryan Holiday means when he says, the obstacle is the way. It's about turning what seems like a roadblock into a stepping stone for development. Think about it. When your partner forgets something important, like an anniversary, it's easy to feel let down. But instead of viewing this as a failure on their part, why not see it as a chance to share your feelings and set expectations for the future? You could even use humor to lighten the mood 
saying something like, looks like we're both getting a bit to season to remember dates. Maybe it's time for that giant calendar I saw at the mall. This not only helps address the issue, but also opens up space for a constructive and understanding conversation, using the obstacle as the way means looking for solutions instead of just focusing on the problem. It's about asking yourself, how can this improve our relationship? Or what can I learn from this situation? This mindset not only helps you understand your partner better, but also builds resilience and empathy within the relationship. So let's embrace each challenge as a chance for growth, not as something that holds us back. Every tough moment in a relationship is an opportunity to practice patience, improve communication, and strengthen your bond. As you navigate these challenges, remember to keep the mantra I rise above closed to your heart. By doing so, you rise above the small frustrations and focus on the bigger picture of personal growth and mutual understanding. If you're enjoying the comment, subscribe to the channel. Thanks. Principle 4. Practice for given chance someone ignores you or there's a hiccup in communication within a relationship. It's natural to feel frustrated or upset at first, but what if we saw these moments as invitations to practice one of the most freeing Stoic principles forgiveness? Alexander Pope once wisely said, Tour is human. To forgive, divine, this isn't just a pretty saying. It's a practical reminder that forgiveness is a powerful, almost sacred act that helps us let go of anger and bitterness. Imagine your partner forgets to call when they're running late. Instead of letting irritation take over, try approaching the situation with forgiveness. When they finally show up, you could say something lighthearted like, I was about to organize a search party, but it looks like you saved them the trouble. This playful comment helps ease any tension and opens the door for understanding without holding on to resentment. Forgiveness in relationships isn't about ignoring mistakes or pretending everything is perfect. It's about choosing not to let these small bumps in the road ruin your entire journey together. It means acknowledging the mistake, talking about how to prevent it in the future, and then genuinely moving on. This approach not only helps create a supportive environment for both personal and mutual growth, but also builds trust and respect between you and your partner. So let's make a conscious effort to practice forgiveness. Each time we choose to forgive, we reinforce our own inner peace and strengthen the harmony in our relationships. Remember, every act of forgiveness brings us closer to a more compassionate and resilient partnership. And as we forgive, let's keep our mantra close to our hearts. I rise above. By rising above fleeting conflicts, we reach new heights of grace and understanding, making our relationships more fulfilling and joyful. And with this, we have crossed the halfway mark of our video. If you're still with us, it means this content resonates with you. And that's fantastic. If you haven't already, I'd love it if you could take a moment to like the video, hit the subscribe button, and leave a little comment. Simply drop our mantra for today, I rise above, in the comments. This lets us know that you're finding value in what we're sharing and are on this journey of growth and resilience with us. Now let's proceed to the next principle one you definitely won't want to miss. Principle 5. Embrace indifference to external opinion ever felt like you're at the mercy of someone else's mood swings. It's like being a puppet on a string where their emotions dictate your own. But here's a thought. What if you could cut those strings and dance to your own rhythm? Marcus Aurelius offers a powerful perspective. If you are distressed by anything external, the pain is not due to the thing itself, but to your estimate of it and this you have the power to revoke at any moment. This quote reminds us that we have the power to control our reactions, not the external events or opinions of others. Picture this. Your partner suddenly gives you the cold shoulder. Instead of letting their mood send you into a spiral of worrying and self-doubt, remind yourself, I rise above. This doesn't mean you're indifferent to their feelings, but it means you're choosing not to let their mood dictate your peace. You might lighten the moment with a comment like, looks like someone's hit the invisible mode button. Then, give them the space they need while you continue with your day, unaffected and with a smile. Practicing emotional independence in this way doesn't just help you stay calm. It transforms your interactions with everyone. You become less reactive and more centered, like a sailor who can navigate smoothly even when the sea gets choppy. Instead of letting others' moods control you, you maintain your own inner stability. So, the next time you're faced with someone's bad mood or feel ignored, remember Aurelius's wisdom. Detach from the drama, keep your peace intact, and affirm cheerfully, I rise above. Your peace is yours alone to control so hold on to it tightly, and don't let anyone else have the remote control. But there is a catch. If you've been trying for a long time to get out of this conformism and can't seem to do it, maybe it's for other reasons that you don't know what's causing it. I know what it is. It's anxiety. Anxiety comes like a silent snake and poisons you without you feeling it. It leaves you infected for days, months, and even years. And if you have it, 
It's like living sick. However, there is an antidote from the Stoics, which together with modern psychology can rid you of all this, just as it did me. I made a video showing how to get rid of this poison in your life. It's in the first comment. Click on the link in the first comment to end cure yourself of this anxiety poison. Principle 6. Seek clarity through honest communication avening through the murky waters of being ignored can feel like drifting through foggy seas, where every wave of silence leaves us guessing. But guesswork isn't a solid foundation for any relationship. As George Bernard Shaw wisely noted, the single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it has taken place. This quote underscores a crucial point. Assuming that others know how we feel, or that we understand their silence can lead to misunderstandings and missed connections. When you sense that someone is ignoring you, the impulse might be to mirror their behavior or retreat into your own shell. But a more stoic approach involves breaking this cycle with clear, honest communication. Imagine a friend or partner has been distant lately. Instead of stewing in silence or letting frustration build, reach out with genuine concern. You might say, I've noticed we haven't talked as much lately, and I'm wondering if everything's okay on your end. I really value our relationship and just want to make sure we're still on good terms. This isn't just about addressing the issue. It's about setting a tone of respect and empathy, rather than confrontation. Approaching the situation this way shows that you're not merely reacting to being ignored, but actively seeking to understand and resolve any underlying issues. It's about cutting through the fog of silence with the clarity of direct communication. By doing so, you pave the way for deeper understanding and connection. So, as we embrace our mantra of I rise above, let's not shy away from those potentially awkward yet necessary conversations. Honest communication is a bridge built on understanding and respect and it's one of the most effective tools we have to nurture and strengthen our relationships. Let's use our words to heal, connect, and elevate our connections, transforming moments of silence into opportunities for deeper bonds. Principle 7. Visualize the ideal response to have you ever reacted to being ignored in a way you later felt bad about. It happens to everyone. Stoicism teaches us to get ready for life's challenges by thinking about how we want to respond before we face them. As the Roman Emperor and Stoic philosopher Marcus Aurelius said, the art of living is more like wrestling than dancing. This means being prepared and ready is important, just like a wrestler plans their moves ahead of time. When you feel ignored, instead of reacting right away, take a moment to imagine how the best version of yourself would handle it. Picture yourself staying calm, wise, and maybe even a bit funny. For example, if someone close to you is not talking to you, instead of getting upset, Imagine yourself saying something like, it looks like we're playing a game of who can stay quiet the longest. I think you're winning, but I'm here when you're ready to talk. This way of visualizing helps you prepare for real life situations and can reduce your worry. It helps you act with grace by practicing how you want to respond. By imagining your best responses, you make sure your real actions are thoughtful and match your values. Visualization is more than just thinking. It helps turn possible problems into chances for growth and better connections. By practicing your responses, you can make sure your actions show your true values and intentions. This doesn't mean every situation will go perfectly, but it helps you handle surprises with grace. Think of visualization like practicing for a play. Just as actors rehearse their lines to give a great performance, visualizing how you'll respond helps you express your thoughts and feelings clearly when the time comes. This practice is especially useful in relationships where feelings can run high and the wrong words or tone can make things worse. Plus, using visualization helps you learn about yourself. It shows you what triggers you and what responses aren't helpful, so you can develop better ways to react over time. Each time you visualize a situation and rehearse your response, you build your emotional strength and get better at handling tricky interactions. So, as we continue to embrace the mantra, I rise above, let's integrate visualization into our toolkit for handling being ignored or misunderstood. By preparing ourselves mentally for these challenges, we not only improve our interactions, but also strengthen our character. This approach allows us to handle life's slights with grace and humor, turning potential conflict into moments of learning and connection. Remember, every time you choose to respond thoughtfully, you're not just preserving relationships, you're also cultivating a stronger, more resilient self. Let's keep using visualization to refine our responses, ensuring that we meet each situation, not just adequately, but with excellence. This is how we rise above by preparing, practicing, and embodying the best versions of ourselves, no matter the challenge at hand. Principle 8. Trust your inner voice when you're feeling ignored. It's like being adrift in a vast sea of silence. And this is precisely the moment to tune in to your intuition, your inner compass. This subtle, Guiding force often reveals more about a situation than mere actions or words. 
Shakespeare wisely advised, trust thyself. Every heart vibrates to that iron string. This quote emphasizes the value of listening to our inner voice. Even when we lack external confirmation. Picture this. Someone you care about suddenly becomes distant. Instead of letting worrying or anxious thoughts take over, pause and reflect on your inner feelings. Think about this person's usual behavior. Is their silence unusual? Your intuition can help you understand whether they're just preoccupied with their own issues or if their silence hints at something deeper in your relationship. Listening to your inner voice means paying close attention to your own emotions and thoughts before taking action. Perhaps your inner guide suggests giving them some space, or it might encourage you to reach out and check in. You might send a lighthearted message to break the ice. Hey, just making sure you haven't been abducted by aliens since you've been so quiet. Everything okay. Your intuition is a powerful ally in these times of uncertainty, helping you navigate relational dynamics when communication is unclear. Trusting yourself doesn't always provide immediate answers, but it helps you respond in ways that align with your true self. As you embrace the wisdom of I rise above, let your inner voice be your guiding star, steering you through confusion and uncertainty. Trusting yourself isn't just about making the right decisions. It's about making decisions that honor who you are. Let's move forward with confidence, guided by our intuition and a sense of purpose on our journey. Principle 9. Reflect on the nature of relationship. Have you ever noticed how we sometimes cling to relationships that don't quite fit anymore, like trying to use expired milk in your coffee? It's a bit like hoping that old, sour milk will magically make your drink taste fresh. Similarly, we hold on to relationships that might not be nourishing us anymore. The Greek philosopher Plato once said, Every heart sings a song incomplete until another heart whispers back. Those who wish to sing always find a song at the touch of a lover. Everyone becomes a poet. This quote beautifully captures how meaningful relationships should feel like a harmonious duet, where both hearts are in tune. But what if that other heart isn't singing back? Maybe you've noticed a friend growing distant, or a partner who seems less engaged. This is your chance to reassess and reflect. Think of it as checking if your favorite song still sounds right on an old record player. Are you and this person still in harmony, or has the melody turned discordant? In practical terms, this could mean having an honest conversation maybe over a relaxed coffee catch-up. You might say something like, I've noticed we seem a bit out of sync lately. Is everything okay? This isn't about assigning blame. It's about understanding whether you both still want to be in tune or if it might be time to change the rhythm. Relationships thrive on mutual respect and engagement. So if you find yourself off and walking alone on this path, it might be time to reassess whether it's still the right path for you. Reflect on whether the connection brings joy and harmony or if it's time to find a new melody that resonates with both your heart and theirs. As we navigate these dynamics, remember our mantra, I rise above, embrace the idea that it's okay to let go of relationships that no longer serve you well, and to seek out new ones that align with your own song. It's all part of finding a harmonious life where every heart sings true. Principle 10. Detach from outcome when you're ignored or overlooked. It's normal to hope for something specific after reaching out or sharing your feelings, maybe an apology, a change in behavior, or at least some recognition. However, a key lesson from Stoicism is learning not to be attached to the results of our actions. Epictetus, a famous Stoic philosopher, said, make the best use of what is in your power and take the rest as it happens. This means we can control what we do and how we act, but we can't control how others react. Imagine you've decided to talk openly with someone who has been ignoring you. You stay kind, use humor to keep things light, and try to communicate clearly. Even then, the other person might stay distant or not respond at all. At these times, it's important to let go of the need for a specific outcome. This helps you stay calm and prevents you from feeling upset or resentful. For example, if you try to talk to a friend who has been ignoring you and they still don't reply, remind yourself with the phrase, I rise above. This helps you remember that you've done your part well and that their response doesn't change your worth or the value of your efforts. Letting go of needing a specific result doesn't mean you stop caring or trying. It means finding peace inside yourself no matter what happens. It's about knowing that your happiness and peace should come from within, not from what others do or say. This letting go isn't about being uncaring. It's about staying balanced. It means understanding that you can't make people act how you want them to, but you can control your own actions and reactions. This helps you avoid the cycle of hoping for something and being disappointed when it doesn't happen. By focusing on what you can control your actions, attitudes, and honesty, you live more peacefully and happily. Additionally, this practice of letting go improves your relationships. It helps you interact with others without putting pressure on them or expecting them to act a certain way. People often respond better when they don't feel forced. 
Letting go creates a sincere environment where relationships can grow based on mutual respect and honesty. As you keep saying I rise above, try to detach from the outcomes of your interactions. This not only keeps you calm, but also helps you stay true to your values and principles, no matter what happens around you. Remember, it's not about the reaction you get, but the grace and peace with which you handle things. By focusing on your actions and letting go of specific expectations, you find inner peace and experience the true freedom of stoicism living in harmony with whatever life brings. And there we have it. Friends, our journey through the 10 Stoic principles on how to handle being ignored, each one a stepping stone towards greater resilience and understanding. We've delved deep in to maintain our composure, communicating effectively and detaching from outcomes, all while uh, holding our heads high and spirits unshaken. Thank you to each of you for sticking with us to the end. Your engagement and presence truly transform this community, making it a strong and supportive space for all. Now, I'd love to hear your stories in the comments below. Share with us a time when you were ignored and how you managed to handle it. Did you rise above? What valuable lessons did you learn from the experience? Your shared experiences are not only inspiring, but also help all of us to learn and grow together. And if you liked the content, please subscribe for more valuable content.